So I know uh, a lot of coaches will get up here and say how, how, how proud of their team. Man, I'm proud of my team. I mean, we have, um, this has been a really, really good year for us uh, because I have 100% buy-in. And, you know, I, when you look at our, our group, you know, I wanted to go out and find some older guys to be able to put around to Quavion Smith, you know, with the vision of this possibly happening. And these guys have really grown a lot, and uh, it means a lot that what we've done. And you look at the bunch after the game, they're just so excited for one another. Uh, I thought um, John Kel Joyner was, was great. Um, I thought he made every big shot we need to have. He did a good job getting us into what we needed to do. And we defended. We defended the last eight minutes of the game, and I think that was a big reason that we got away with a great win. So, questions? I mean, at this point, what more can you say about Jarkel Joyner? Because it seems like every time he has a big performance, he just continues to outdo himself. You know, that kid's, that kid's unbelievable. Like, I don't know if you guys have had time to meet him, meet him off the court. I mean, trem tremendous young man. And, you know, we're in an age now when, when you're not young, you don't get drafted. Um, but he's a kid that, because he's played so much basketball and a really good basketball player, I can see him ending up on somebody's roster in the NBA because he's a really good, he's a better person than a basketball player, and that's scary. When we spoke at your press conference earlier in the week and we asked about DJ Burns versus Armando Baycott, you said it was going to be, you know, an entertaining battle. How do you feel that battle went tonight? I think it was great. I mean, both of those guys are good. You look at the numbers, um, you know, Mondo didn't have, um, he didn't have what I call video game numbers. You know, against us earlier in the year, he had 23 and 18. I think we can manage that if he gets 16 of the 14 shots. But he's so good and he's so talented and it's hard to guard him. On the other end, man, I love my guy. I mean, great touch. Um, you know, untraditional Kevin Keats player, as most people would say. <laughs> But I've turned into one of the best post coaches in the country because of DJ Burns. <laughs> Kevin, with Dark L, how much do you sort of call stuff for him versus maybe trust him to make the right read in the second half where he had 20 points? Well, it's a mixed bag. I mean, we call some things for him. But, you know, I, very seldom does that kid call his own number. I let him play during this part of it, and he called his own number. Like, it was one of those things he was feeling it so well when he pulled up for that three um, at, um, or by our bench. I was like, no, 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 no. And then when it went in, you know, of course, I was like, great shot. But, it, you know, he's a – that kid's good. I mean, he's really good and he's bought in. And, you know, I can't say enough. You know, it's tough in this league when you don't have a quarterback, when you don't have a point guard, and he makes us better. Kevin, Jack Clark made the, the big three that put you ahead, and I don't think you were – you trailed after that. And I think he led you in a rebound. How much does having him back add to this team? Well, it gives us another dimension, um, his ability to pick and pop. You have to respect it. When, Jack, when Jack's on the floor, it makes things a little bit easier for DJ because now you got kind of four shooters around him when we throw the ball inside. He's still not in great shape. Uh, I wanted to go with Ernest at the end of the stretch because I wanted Ernest to be able to defend and rebound a little bit more, but Jack's going to help us down the stretch. Yeah, I assume you're wet because you had a little water bath in the, in the locker room. What did it mean to have that moment with those guys? It's great. You know, Dana, here's one thing that we've done is we, um, we celebrate every win. And I know that's silly. And people say, man, even your non-conference wins. I think we got 21 wins. And those 21 wins, I leave, I leave out of the locker room most of the time wet. Winning is so tough. Uh, it means a lot. Our guys were pumped up. Uh, when I walked in, they all had water bottles, and it's it's almost like 15 guys against one. Because, so that's why I look the way I look. But we're so happy, man. I, I love this bunch. Um, I've loved all my teams. I'm, I'm I always love the kids that I coach. But it's something about this group that, man, makes it just something special about those guys. You mentioned the 21 wins. Last year, you had 21 losses. Does well, that well, mean it? Does well that thank, mean you, thank you for reminding <laughs> me. <laughs> no, but, I mean, it's a total turnaround. I mean, does that mean anything to, to hit that 21 mark and there any significance in that? I just knew it was somebody was going to bring that up. No, I, mean, listen, me. I don't I don't take anything for granted. Um, we've had a great turnaround and I, I'm proud of our guys and, you know, we, I wanted to make last, last year a one-off. Uh, we didn't want it to be one of those situations that happened every year for us because we were better than that. 
Uh, but but I am happy the way we played and we turned it around. Thank you for that question. Kevin, Darko and DJ both mentioned that before the game, your message was some sort of, at the start of the year, there weren't a lot of people in this building, and now it's going to be a packed house. What have you enjoyed about seeing how the following has evolved throughout the year? Yeah, I don't, I don't blame folks for kind of waiting and see. Uh, I don't. Some coaches would be pissed off. You've never heard me say one thing about our attendance this year. I leave that up to our marketing. But I do know, I did know if we won, they would come to games. And I mean, just to touch on that, our fans were tremendous. Um, the atmosphere was great. Uh, that was the first time to me that this current group of guys got a chance to see what Wolfpack Nation looks like. And they'll come, we'll continue to win as we win, they'll come. And we had to earn that. And I'm completely okay with that. And that, that was the question I was going to ask there was at 6760, there's no question that's as loud as the building has been this year. But is that as loud as you've heard it in your tenure? I know you've had some big wins in here, but that seemed like almost a release from the crowd. You know what, Luke? Um, even, my, even my players were ignoring me or if it was really loud in there. Because I tried to call like 10 plays and they were like, couldn't hear me. <laughs> It, it was a great atmosphere, it, and, it, and it probably was the loudest that I've heard it since I've been here. NC State with wins over UNC in wrestling, men's basketball, women's basketball, and football this year. How strong is this brand, and how good does that feel that you're contributing to that rivalry? Well, I would say to you, it's not about let's just concentrate on wins over to everybody in the ACC. <laughs> I don't, I don't stack it as because it's great wins over UNC. Um, we, we did our job. The other guys did their job. We're happy with it, but I don't put, I, I know people don't believe this, I don't put one win over the other. It was a win we needed to have, and I'm happy to have it. It's not a rivalry, right? <laughs> <laughs> so why would I care? Coach, Coach, I want to go back to, I want to go back to Jarkel. Coach, right here. I want to go back to Jarkel, and, um, you know, you brought in a lot of different pieces to this program this year, and coaching a few players and all that, but, you know, Jarkel just does seem like a different type of difference maker. How, how has... How would you describe his impact on your program overall with, with what he's brought in? His yeah, I mean, I don't know that I could have got a better person and player out of the portal. And, um, you know, he's, you know, this kid's grown up. And I keep saying kid, this young man's grown up. You know, uh, earlier this year, um, he had, a, you know, his girlfriend had a baby and has helped him mature. And you want to see guys like him just succeed. And he's been great for us. Coach, you talk about the atmosphere and physically you, you held UNC to a 35% shooting with 40 million shots. What played in the parts of that? Well, I just think we were locked in defensively. We've done a good job down the stretch and, you know, keeping guys focused and we wanted to make everything tough. I knew the stat coming into the game is when they shoot the ball well, 37, 38% from three, they typically don't lose. And so we want to make everything tough and be there on catches and be in gap protection. I mean, they're good. When, when, when Amando Baycock is playing great, he puts so much pressure on you because you have to double. And then when you double, he's good enough to be able to make, make plays to those guards. And I thought our guys did a good job in that area tonight, today. Coach, it's Darkell's counterpoint or counterpart, Quaygon Smith. Played on last year's team, obviously could have entered the NBA draft, but comes back this year and now has wins under Duke and Carolina and his belt. How proud are you of the season that he's having? Yeah, Levi, Levi, who played here on my staff, told him if he didn't beat Carolina, he wasn't allowed to come back to Raleigh. So I think that was his motivation. No, he, he is, um, that kid's been great. And uh, I'm so proud of him for coming back, number one, but obviously playing the way he's played for us this year. I mean, he's been great. We, we won't talk a, lot of, talk a lot about him because Jock Hill had the big night. But when you look at overall what he's done, uh, leads the league in scoring, uh, has increased, um, you know, his assist to turnover ratio has become a pro pro, uh, which is lucky to happen. One more. When are you going to come to the next press conference wearing sunglasses? Not my thing. <laughs> That's all DJ Burns. I'm sure the DJ Burns walking in with sunglasses on. Yeah. yeah. So did T. Yeah. Wonder where that came from. <laughs>